Why do you think we, why do you, why are emotions there? Why do we, what, what's the purpose of them? Emotions are serving multiple functions. The first thing is they are hugely informative. Like I said, you know, we may not remember what somebody said or what somebody did, but we remember how they made us feel. That is a form of intelligence. Watch out for this person. When we're walking along in the grass and there's a snake, we jump out of the way before we even are consciously aware that there's a snake. That's how fundamentally programmed the emotion of fear can be. So they firstly are crucial conduits of information. Uh, secondly, they enable us to evaluate what other people are feeling. So when I saw this furious teacher scowling at me, I knew this was a dangerous person. Keep your mouth shut and avoid her. And I think that we do that all the time. We pick up cues from other people with our emotional senses. And I think people who don't have good emotional radar, uh, maybe people with Asperger's or other people who have difficulty with emotional information processing, are at a real disadvantage. They can't pick up certain very pivotal cues. And the other thing is that emotions express things. You know, if you love somebody, how you tell that person, how you show that love is part of our emotional capacity. If we can't show love, if we can't express love, that could really uh, damage our capacity to have profound relationships. So emotions are so important from so many different points of view. And it, it makes me think of the, the idea of character, right? I mean, there is your personal character, right, as a human being. There's your character as a man. And um, there's the character in the third person of, oh, I saw that, that actor interpret the character of Macbeth, for example, um, which is, is up on Broadway and it got great, it's getting great reviews. Sir, uh, Kenneth Branagh is interpreting it. Mm -hmm. Um, um, just coincidentally, I thought I'd mention that. Um, so there's the question of character, right? And, and we're talking about emotions and we're also talking about the tools that we can implement in order to deal with our negative emotions and aid our positive emotions and those emotions that get in our way and in our process. Right. And then, Right. I mean, that's sort of what we've been speaking about, talking about fear of success and fear of failure and anxiety and now talking about the need and the reasoning behind emotions. So this all goes into uh, it, it all informs a character. Right. So I'm going to I'd like to ask you what you think that is, what what you think character is. And then I have this sort of working theory of what character is and then how to what what it means when someone writes a character and I'm speaking from very subjectively from an actor's perspective well a couple of things firstly I want to say that emotions don't always work well let's say you've got a depressed person they are misinterpreting their world they may be seeing everything as negative when it really isn't or somebody who's manic may think that everything is wonderful when it isn't. Or somebody who's paranoid may think that you're after them when you're not. So emotions are great when they're working well, but sometimes they aren't. And that's where a good friend or a good coach or a good therapist will say, let's look at this. Is this emotion in proportion to the trigger that set it off? Is it a proportional emotion to what you're perceiving here? Okay, so I think emotions are fantastic when they're working well. They can be very painful when they're not working well. And I think it's an important distinction. And sometimes you need a friend or a coach or a therapist or a psychiatrist to help you distinguish between those different entities. Let's now talk about character. Well, you know, as you say, you can be a character in a play or you can have character. They're two somewhat different meanings. And I don't know which of the two is of greater interest to you. I'd Arthur. rather speak in subjectively about your own, your own character universally, meaning, you know, okay, my character, your character, your character, anybody's character. 
your character is only partly emotion. So in other words, if you're nervous all the time, your character will be that of a nervous person. That will leave its mark on other people, and that is how you're going to experience your life. But your character is not only emotion. Your character is your belief system, your values. We all know people who do the right thing. Um, in the programs of uh, AA and other programs, they say, do the next right thing. And people of character have a set of values that they aspire to live up to. They may not always succeed, but they really try. And when they fall short, they're aware of it, and they acknowledge it, and they uh, feel badly about it. What they do about it, you know, sometimes they may make amends, sometimes they may try and repair the uh, result of, you know, stepping out of character. Uh, but I think when we talk about character, we talk about somebody... Uh, with a value system, who lives by those values, who uh, governs his or her emotions, and how good you are at doing all those things. And of course, people are all over the map with regard to that. That's how I understand character. That's sort of the working theory that I have right now um, in terms of character, because I don't really regard acting so much from the perspective of emotion meaning you know how 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 does the character emote or not emote or how does the actor emote or not emote I, I don't think that that's useful I think of it more in terms of what are the circumstances that are being given to me or to us by the uh, playwright and what interpretation does the director have on those circumstances and typically what that means is that in my imagination I have to create set of circumstances that parallel those the director is interpreting using the playwright or the screenwriter's words and then pursue those objectives along the way because I'm a human being and because I'm alive I'm going to feel stuff simple as that now getting back to the character question it's determining what sort of morals or ethics the human being that is being described through the construct of the playwright or the screenwriter, right? That is being interpreted by the director. And then understanding how it is that those morals and ethical principles and choices and wrestling with doing the right thing mm -hmm. versus doing the wrong thing or wrestling with choices of convenience, right? That determines character. Well, I think without I think, any without any judgment, by the way, I'm not saying that somebody has better character or somebody has worse character. I'm just saying character as a definition. Well, you know, yeah, I think that if you're going to be an actor, you need to have a range. You need to be able to play. If you're going to be really a good actor or actress, you need to have a range. I recently was reading uh, about the career of Doris Day. Mm -hmm. And she was sort of typecast as the good, solid wife, mother, reliable uh, woman of character who didn't kind of deviate. And I saw that she had been offered the role of Mrs. Robinson mm -hmm. in The Graduate, which, of course, was an amazingly wonderful role that was so brilliantly played by Anne Bancroft. In fact, when Anne Bancroft died, the headline in one of the papers was, here's to you, Mrs. Robinson, because we wanted to sort of tip our hats to an actress who had done such a brilliant job and moved us so profoundly. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful role. You've, you know, watch it, I've watched it several times. And, um, you know, she, the, the way she used sex and avoided intimacy. It was brilliantly done. And if you think that what Doris What sort of psychological Day, profile is that? <laughs> it's a great profile. I mean, I don't, you know, you don't know what her backstory was, but she had some sense of a backstory in order to produce it so well because, you know, there she is. She seduced Benjamin, albeit that he has willingly gone along with it, and they're in bed and they've just made love and as I recall, the subject of her daughter comes up, and she gets furious 
because he's crossed a boundary. He's gone from sex to intimacy. He's perforated some barrier that she wants to keep in place, and she kind of really reacts to that. And that's a brilliant actress. Now, in declining that role because it was outside of what she regarded as morally proper, Doris Day limited herself by only being willing to play this indefatigable, persistent, you know, kind of always stand by your man kind of woman, uh, spunky, tough, vulnerable, etc. I mean, she was at one point at the biggest female box office draw, so she didn't do too badly. But she limited herself because she mixed up her own character with a character she was being offered. And I think that career-wise, it was a mistake. I think it was a wonderful role. And Anne Bancroft took it and ran all the way with it. And that's why in her obituary, it was still remembered.